Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're looking at is an electric resistance kit for an air handler. All right, so what we have here, let me just go over the components here. These are electric resistance strips right here. The power is off right now. Um, so if these are, these are electric resistance strips, so I can test the resistance of this to make sure that they are not broken. So here's one set, and here's one set. This is a thermal limit. If, if the uh, disc inside heats up, then this will open, not allowing any voltage to cross. All right. This is a sequencer relay, and it has two levels of sequencers, All right, one, one on the front and then one back here. It then is powered by a 24-volt coil. All right. We have a fan relay right here, 12-amp fan relay, 40VA transformer, and line voltage block right here. So um, there is simpler ways of doing this where you would already have the transformer in the air handler and you wouldn't need a fan relay because you'll have taps basically on the air handler board. That'll say, say auxiliary or, or secondary or something like that. Uh, in this case, what we have here is we have 240 volts coming from here, coming into the transformer with these black leads. Then coming out of the transformer, we have this 24 volt lead and this 24 volt lead. So the common is over here, getting ready to power the sequencer relay. The other one is right here, going to the fan relay. These are normally open, so the electrical circuit is not closed right now. It's open. So it's waiting for a 24-volt signal over here to power the coil and close, and close these contacts right here. All right, so once it does that, and you have 24 volts, right there, then these are going to close, allowing power over to here. And then once again, this is the common coming back to the transformer. So, so now we're at the sequencer relay. All right, we have the sequencer relay is labeled. And on the top right here, you have four and five. All right, so that's this is four, this red wire, and this is five, this yellow wire. Then you have number one back here, it's this red wire. And number three, that's this yellow wire. All right, so what it's going to do is this sequencer relay says that it's going to close four and five anywhere from one to 20 seconds after this is powered back here with 24 volts. So it's going to close these anywhere between one, one and 20 seconds. And when power is disconnected from this up here, it's going to open this circuit anywhere between 40 and 120 seconds. Okay. Likewise, once again, when power is applied back here, one and three are going to close anywhere between 30 and 90 seconds. So they don't close at the same time because that would be a high inrush of amperage going to these electric resistance coils. So it separates them one at a time. All right. So one and three on the sequencer relay close anywhere between 30 and 90 seconds. They will open anywhere between 1 and 30 seconds. So once again, they, they uh, open at different points and they close at different points. The most important of that is that they close at different points so there's not a high inrush of amperage running from these because it, it is uh, a considerable high amperage. All right. So a lot of people are very cautious about this and, and likewise they should be because it's drawing a lot of amperage. That's that's uh, very dangerous, okay? So we're always shutting the power off when testing these. Almost everything can be tested uh, with resistance values uh, in order to check them safely. And then after you check resistance values, you know, you can also disconnect the high voltage circuit. So in this case, we'll, we'll disconnect this right here. So we have our electric resistance is now disconnected and we can check everything as far as our 24 volt circuit just with our multimeter. All right. And we're not drawing amperage with our electric resistance. So we're set on resistance and we can go ahead and check the resistance value of our electric strip heating in case, say, uh, it just didn't seem like it was 
heating up, we can just check these to make sure that they are intact right here and right here. Okay, this is your electric resistance heat strips. The power is off and the power comes in from here and goes to here. The other electric resistance uh, coil is down here and it goes to this point down here. And we see that we have 11.9 ohms or 12 ohms of resistance. So when we see resistance, we know that work is going to happen. All right, we're going to then check this side right here. And so you've noticed I have disconnected here and here. Anytime you're taking resistance, you have to isolate the component that you're, that you're testing. Make sure it's not back feeding from like resistors on a control board or something. All right, once again, we got about 12 ohms of resistance. So, so these coils are intact. We can also check just to make sure that they're not touching the ground. We should get, oh well, we should not get any uh, resistance to ground. All right, so we're going to check over here now. And we got oh well. So it's over limit, meaning that there is no resistance value because they are not touching. All right, so, so the coils are intact. We can also check this uh, thermal limit right here. Once again, this side is disconnected. All right, so we're going to go ahead and check our resistance value across the first set here. This will tell us if we have a normally closed circuit, or maybe maybe this thermal li this cutout right here is is open. Just maybe it just wore out. Okay, so we're checking it right now, and it is completely closed. Zero ohms of resistance to electrical flow, so that's good. Now let's check the back portion. Zero ohms, which means that there's no resistance to the electrical flow, so that is good. All right, so we checked the, this component and these two components. If you wanted to follow the path of, of how these are going right here, what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you the voltage path. So we have one of our 120 volt legs, and here's our other 120 volt leg. Once again, the power's off. You have your red wire coming this way, right? And it's going here. And then when this closes, the voltage will come across and come on the yellow wire. It will come here through our normally closed switch, right? And it'll come and power our electric resistance. It'll go through the electric resistance, come back out the other side, through the blue wire, and come over to our other hot, okay? So that's how that's powered. And then once again, the same thing for the back one. You have, you have your voltage coming in coming through right here, through from one, two, three, through the yellow wire, and then it's coming through the normally closed switch, through the black wire, through our electric resistance, and coming over to here, through the blue wire, over to our L2. All right? So that's how, it, that's how the voltage path works. It's just a matter of how you're getting your 24 volts to your sequencer relay whether you have a large enough transformer as it is and you don't need this, whether you have to have a 12 amp fan relay or even an 8 amp fan relay because you're just controlling your 24 volts coming through here, all right? Or if you just have the taps on the actual board, uh, if, you, if you have, say, a newer air handler with a control board. And this right here is your, is your high temperature limit switch right here, okay? And that's going to detect, say, if the blower motor uh, fails or you have a uh, dirty filter or something like that. All right? It's going to stop the flow before this coil ends up breaking. All right? But uh, that's what we're looking at. All right? Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC's Everstack channel.